In the previous section, we saw how a loop nest was able to allow us to represent both the scheduling in space and time of the computations on a tensor accelerator that was operating on dense data. That actually corresponded to the mapping of the computation and an expression of that loop nest forms one of the inputs to the time loop model. However, when we start considering sparse tensors, an additional complication gets introduced. Um, and <clears throat> that is because a sparse tensor is going to have a, can be can be represented in a variety of ways in memory. That's going to cause a potential complexity in the representation of the mapping problem. In order to address this, we're going to introduce the notion of a tensor abstraction, be that tensor dense or sparse. And we're going to take some of our initial motivation or inspiration for how to approach this from a recent XKCD cartoon that says, in dimensional chess, every move is annotated. And so here they have this multidimensional tensor representing a chessboard, and you need a way of talking about the locations and the moves on the board. So we're gonna to need to do the same thing. So I'm gonna begin with a set of terminology that we're gonna use for describing a tensor. So here I have drawn a matrix or two-dimensional tensor or rank two tensor because what we're going to do is refer to the two dimensions as the ranks of the tensor and so therefore this tensor has a rank w and a rank h essentially corresponding to the height and width of input activations we talk about then the way of specifying elements in it by saying that we're going to talk about their coordinates. So along the W rank, we have coordinate 0, 1, and 2. And along the uh, columns, or H rank, we also have coordinate 0, 1, and 2. And therefore, we can talk about a point or a single cell in the tensor as being at coordinates 1, 2, which would bring us to this f value. Now we're going to extend that notation and um, represent the tensor as a tree. An important thing to note here is that I'm not advocating that we use a tree representation in memory, but we're simply using the, the abstraction of a tr tree to represent the data in the tensor. And so here what we have is a, a, a matrix. So we have two ranks and each of those ranks correspond to a level of the tree. So the H rank here is uh, the top level, and it has coordinates 0, 1, and 2. And below it is the W rank, and below each of the coordinates in the top rank are the coordinates 0, 1, and 2 in the next rank. So notice here that the order of the ranks, sorry, so this is the root of the tree, and these are the two ranks of the tree. And so notice that in, even in our abstraction, the order of the ranks do uh, manifest uh, themselves in the way we want to think about the tensor. And as I said before, the coordinates um, are, are, are shown as, as elements of each of the, in, in each of the ranks. And finally, at the leaves of the tree are the values in the, um, 
in the pencil. And I use a dashed oval to represent a level and all of the elements in a level or rank of the uh, pencil. Now I'm going to change this representation slightly and talk about what we're going to refer to as fibers in the tree. And so the top rank has a single fiber, which has coordinate 0, 1, and 2. And then each coordinate in that rank has as its child another fiber, which has coordinates 0, 1, and 3 for the W rank. In order to simplify things slightly, and so that we don't have to have this coordinate have, have references to each of the coordinates in the next rank, I'm actually going to change the tree slightly so that uh, this coordinate has a reference not to the individual coordinates in the next rank, but to the fiber in the next rank. And so therefore, coordinate 0 points at this fiber, coordinate 1 points at this fiber, and, and so on. In summary, our terminology for the fiber tree abstraction is that we have a root of the tree. The root of the tree points to a fiber in the top rank. The top rank always has exactly one fiber in it, and that fiber has a set of coordinates, and each of those coordinates has at the middle ranks has a reference to a fiber in the next rank, and the coordinates in the bottom rank have a reference to the final value of the scalar of the of the pencil of the of a of a point in the pencil okay so how do we use this abstraction well a common thing that we want to do is to find the value at a particular point in the pencil so here we have the operation i want to find the point to one and so how am I going to do that? I'm going to start at the root, find the fiber of the top rank. I now want to look for the point two, the uh, coordinate two in that, in that fiber. So I found the fiber. I then look for the coordinate two. Now I have the coordinate two. The coordinate two has a reference to a fiber in the next rank. And so now I have a fiber in the next rank, and I can look for the coordinate 1. That coordinate 1 has a reference to a value, and I'm able to find that value. Now, I presume that's fairly straightforward, but notice that it was only in this, on this abstraction of a tensor. I don't really care exactly how it is implemented, that I can find the point to 1 in the tensor. Um, now, what if my tensor is sparse? And so if I have a sparse tensor in my matrix, it's just going to mean that certain of these values are going to be 0. In, our, in this uh, context, we're just going to assume sparse means that there's zeros here. And so now we have some non-zero values and some uh, zero values. Representing it in, in the fiber tree is very easy. We simply have certain coordinates that don't exist. So the absence of this entire row in the H rank means that there is no value for the coordinate value 1. And so that coordinate doesn't exist. If I look at the individual value at, the, at, at this point, I have no value at coordinate 0, 1. And so that value goes away, and I have no value at the coordinate 2, 2, and so that coordinate can go away. And so now I have a very easy representation for a sparse tensor. Finding point 2, 1 in a sparse tensor 
works exactly as it did before. I start at the root. I go to a particular fi the top the fiber in the top rank of the uh, fiber tree. I then look for the coordinate two. Coordinate two has a reference to a fiber in the next rank. I now can look for the point one. Point one has a reference to its value, which is H. 